Now let us go ahead. We will start with the very first step of working on Pega is creating your Pega application. Okay. So here I'm using a Pega's uh, personal edition here. Okay. okay. So then I think we'll we'll go ahead. I'm I'm going to log in with the super admin, whatever you can call it, which administrator at the right pega.com. And install is going to be my password. Yeah. Okay, let me just close this. The version will be working is 8.5, right? Right, yes. Yes. Okay. So let me log in. Okay, in the main while, while it loads, so each studio is divided into four parts, right? Each studio okay. is divided into four parts. So the top portion where, where you see the studio and where you see the uh, application that it is pointing to is called the header area. Right? So you might have been aware of this, but just uh, reiterating the terminologies. Okay? So the okay. header area on where you get to see the application, then your configure, launch portals, search. So all that is, is part of the header area. And on the left side, where you can explore things, it could be case types, data types, records, favorites. Okay. So this left side is called your Explorer panel. Okay. So what is it called? It's called the Explorer panel. Let me just... Uh, Okay, so the top portion is your header area, whereas the left is your explorer panel, right? And then what is this called? The bottom part where you see issues, trace. Toolbar. Exactly, so it's your developer toolbar. Perfect. And the major portion of the screen where you actually work is your work area, right? So it's your work area, right? Your header, explorer panel, developer toolbar, and work area. Now, you expect these things to be same across all the studios? Would it be the same? Um, so is it like? Mm -hmm. I think so. It will be same. Header area, header area would be same across all the studios. Uh, no, it will be different because we'll need to right. have different sort of things on different studios. Exactly. So talking about developer toolbar, would it be same across all the studios? Definitely not. So when it's on the Dev Studio, like I, I will have the highest privileges of debugging things or you know looking at some issues. But when it comes to App Studio, I don't need my BA to work on issues or I don't need my BA to debug things, right? So according to the studio, the entities on these areas might differ, right? And probably that's the whole purpose of having different studios for different people. Okay. So, yes, we cannot expect the things to be same across all the studios. They are respective to the studio. So, when you look at developer toolbar, I will have only limited set of actions available on the app studio. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, so then let us go ahead and we will try to create our first Pega application. It's like we're still loading. We are just reloading just once. Are you able to see the studio, the dev studio here? Yes. Okay. Okay. Seems like this is taking time. So while we'll be developing this application, we'll be using the same application for all the concepts, right? Right, yes, yes. Hmm. So where do we start the uh, application creation with? How do we start that? Um, Any guesses? Yeah, where, the where? Path, path you're asking, right? Uh, right, right. Uh, so we can click on the application mm -hmm. on, right, yes. uh, on platform menu. Right, new application okay yes so this is your new application creation wizard so we we use this term called wizard a lot in pega because wizard is like a step-by-step -step process of achieving something okay so this is a new okay. application application a wizard there are a lot of other wizards as well right like for skimming there is a wizard and then there is one for optimizing a property there is a wizard and for your localization there is a wizard likewise we have multiple wizards for different uh, requirements right so wizard is something which involves some set of steps and an outcome is involved okay. so as part of a new application creation wizard the system is asking what kind of application you would like to build okay so we have two types here one is classic the other one is cosmos so classic involves the conventional ui kit i mean here the difference is the user experience right how would the ui B. Would you like to go with an advanced bit of UI? You can go with Cosmos. Right? If you would like to go with the conventional UI kit, uh, which you know it Pega has been using from a lot of years, then you can go for the classic. Okay? So the only difference is the user experience part here. Okay? So first we'll will build the classic type, then we'll we'll come back to the Cosmos. Okay? So let me select the classic. And as I chose classic here, I don't have any predefined templates available. So this is just like a plain sheet of paper. I don't have anything just directly available on it for reusability. Okay. So like I said, no predefined case types or data types. Nothing is already available. So everything has to be built from scratch. And when I say that, I can still reuse the basic OTB features provided by the platform, those are still intact for me, right? The basic Pega rules uh, application is still 
available for me i can reuse things from there but just by using classic i i don't get to see any predefined templates available okay let me go with this application type okay so what kind of application are we going to build okay so let's take uh, an example of um, probably um, let's take an hr services application And before clicking on create, the most important thing is your advanced configuration. Okay, where you decide what kind of application you're going to build, for whom are you going to build, what is your class structures, all that is part of the advanced configuration. Okay, the first thing is the application settings, where you decide the type of the application structure, whether you want it to be framework or you want that to be implementation. Now, how do I decide this? On what basis can I decide framework or implementation? Any guesses? So if we want to reuse the code somewhere, we'll make it a framework. And if we have to mm -hmm. customize it for some specific thing, we'll go for implementation. Exactly, perfect. So framework is when you talk about reusability, right? So one of the capabilities of Pega platform is extensible applications, which means using this platform, you can create your own frameworks. Okay, what is a framework? Framework is nothing but a set of code, a set of rules that is available. And if required, I can reuse it. Okay? Someone has already built it and I can just reuse it. Okay? So you can decide whether is there a scope of reusability for your application? If yes, go for the framework type. Okay? Otherwise, when if it's customized entirely for a specific requirement, you can go for the implementation. Okay? Good. So let me define my application ID. Let it be HRS, which is the unique identifier for your application. Good. Then I have a version. O1, O1, O1. Now, what is it? Why do I have three versions here? What is this O1, O1, O1? Uh, so, the first one is for the major, if we have any major enhancements in, your, in our application. Uh, the right. second one is for the minor enhancements. And the right. uh, last one is for any, if we have any bugs or uh, patchwork, if we have to do, we'll use that version. All right. So this is your major version. This is your minor version. And this is your patch. Right? Yes. Like you said, so this version goes for your bug fixes or issues or for defects. Whereas this version for minor enhancements or probably any interim releases will go with this. Whereas major enhancements will, will go on the major version. Good. Now, O1, O1, O1. Can I use this? Something like 21, 31, and 41? Can I? Instead of O1, O1, O1? No, we should go in sequence. Mm, we should go in a sequence, but the system is not stopping me if I use this, right? The system is not throwing an error. It's not stopping me. But the problem is, if I show this to a regular uh, uh, Pega developer, what would they understand is 20 major versions of the application have been released and you are on the 21st version. Okay? Whereas 30 major minor versions have been released and you are on the 31st. Similarly, 40 patch have been released and you are on the 41st version. That's how they would interpret this. Right? So it's always a best practice to start with one over O. Okay. So this is part of the best practice to start your application. Now, if you show this to someone, yes, they would understand that this is the first, very first version of the application. Right. So then 
the organization sets now pegas enterprise edition is not free of cost right you have to get it or you have to purchase it by getting a license right you have to pay for it now the whole of this thing you paid for the license then you have you are developing an application and all would you do it for an individual is no. it some like, you know nayan wanted this so i am building the entire application for her no it has to be for an organization right it's always a business to business kind of scenario not a business to individual or not a business to customer scenario here so always pega application involves organization structures okay now which organization are you building this application for i'll just name some xyz organization right yes now within the organization you might have different departments right like there could be it admin then hr finance so division and unit are like the sub aspects of your organization for example if hr is my division within hr i can have multiple you know uh, different sub divisions as in like hr employee engagement could be there hr onboarding could be there or hr recruitment hr resignation so different teams in hr could be there right hr employee engagement could be my unit okay so your division and unit could be functional aspects or they can also be geographic locations okay something like this or it can be a combination of both depending upon what or where you are targeting this application okay they can be functional aspects or they can be geographic locations right yes now yes. on this basis, we will have class structure being defined okay your class structure is a combination of application settings and organization settings put together so here is my organization here is my application right okay right. so this class group is where i mean this is like the parent class where your case types would be defined so if required i can also change this class group name but as a best practice we will always go with the work only i mean as a best practice again just like how we go with over and over and over similarly it is work but if required i can change it definitely i can but generally as your case types are work types we suggest that you use the name as work here okay because this is where your uh, business transactions are defined right yeah okay right so looking at the class structure i can identify that this is framework application because i see an fw here it represents that this application or this class structure is related to a framework application right so yes, yes it seems like everything looks good hrs version organization looks good so let me save it and we'll create the application okay as you know creation of this application means creation of a lot of okay so this is still loading so the application has yet to be created so once the framework application is created what we'll do is we'll create some case types okay and we will okay. try to use them in an another application i mean we'll also create an implementation application we'll we'll see how 
the reusability is coming into picture so when we uh, click on this create application what all things are created in the background so one thing is your application development rule then you you will have the organization division units you will have a set of access groups created right then you will have some access roles created as well then your rule sets yes then uh, you know, different kind of uh, rule sets the organization and your uh, organization int rule sets then your application application int rule sets then few work queues work groups so all these things would be created by default so earlier we used to create these manually so this wizard so, has made it a lot more easier now so before 8 version we used to create it manually right right before 8 yes so i mean even in 7. Uh, to starting from 7.2, I think we, we got this uh, wizard available. So it's like in six versions, it, it used to be a manual effort. Okay. Right, okay. Yes, let me create the application. Okay, so once the application is created, we'll, we'll create some operators as well. So we can either create an admin or an author. So let's create a couple of operators. And once we log in into the application, we can create more operators. Okay. Uh, if I give the name of the application here, say okay. HR services, okay. and I do not uh, go to advanced configuration. I directly mm -hmm. uh, go to create application. Then what okay. sort of application will get created? A framework or an implementation one? So by default, it will be the implementation type. It goes to okay. the implementation. But the problem is you cannot select an organization there. It, it, the, the system will already have a default organization and with that your application will be created. Right? But it, it ideally it has to be with the organization that you specified, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So sometimes, uh, you know, even without clicking on advanced configuration, we would just click on submit or create application. So yes, there are scenarios like that. Yeah, I I only did that once, so okay. <laughs> that's why I okay. wanted to know the importance of advanced okay. configuration. So it, it goes to the implementation type and with the default uh, organization. I assume it would be something like QSC for something, uh, which is of the default uh, organization name. Okay, so the class structure also will be according to the default uh, ones, which uh, is exactly okay. exactly. So it wouldn't be the one that you wanted right? because you cannot create with a random organization name like that. Okay. So yes, let me create an operator admin at the rate HR and I want that to be an administrator role. So once I get the uh, default password, I would like to log in. Yes. Okay, let me just make a note of it just in case. Now, either I can just click on done to close the wizard, or I can either directly log off. Right? So, I think I'll just go ahead and log off. So now if I log in with this admin at the rate HR, which studio will I be launched? 
uh, it will be the admin studio right why because the role that we have chosen is an administrator so by default yes. it will be launched on the admin studio perfect so let me just log in 